Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Stephen Hodder, president here at the RIBA, and I'd like to welcome you all to the presentation of the 2015 RIBA Honorary Fellowships and to the Royal Gold Medal Lecture, given tonight, of course, by the recipients of the 2015 Royal Gold Medal, Sheila O'Donnell and John Toomey. Since 1848, the RIBA has had the very happy responsibility of recommending the Royal Gold Medalist to Her Majesty the Queen and presenting it on her behalf. And this is one of those rare occasions when we honour two recipients in the Irish architects, Sheila O'Donnell and John Toomey. John and Sheila always seem to have been with us here at the RIBA. They won the fir their first RIBA award back in 1997 and they have graced, and I use the word, advisedly because their buildings, beautifully contextual and crafted, are never anything but graceful. They've graced the RIBA Sterling Price shortlist no fewer than five times. But they have never before, and I don't think I'm breaking any confidences here, they've never before been nominated for the Royal Gold Medal. And there came a moment in the meeting last July when I chaired with the Honours Committee last year's winner, Joseph Rickwert, Eric Parry, Louisa Hutton, Benedetta Tagliabue, when we all became aware that it seemed to be just quite right and there was a certain appropriateness of Neil McLaughlin's nomination. And so <clears throat> the decision was made. We will hear much more from others tomorrow uh, night um, and we'll hear from, of course, the architects themselves. But we're also here this evening to honour the winners of the 2015 Honorary Fellowships. The people we're about to present with RIBA Honorary Fellowships are not architects, but we're pleased to recognize them for their significant contribution to architecture and to the public's understanding of the subject. For all their different backgrounds, they share a common aim, that of trying to make the world a better place to live in. And that sits very well with the RIBA's aim of championing better buildings, creating stronger communities, and make a better, better use of the world's shrinking resources. So I'd like to invite to the stage Susie Sainsbury, client extraordinaire, best known perhaps for the recent Sterling shortlisted Royal Shakespeare Theatre in Stratford-on-Avon, so brilliantly recreated by Bennett Associates. Susie, who received her own honorary fellowship this time last year, will be reading short citations for the Honorary Fellows, and you'll be able to read longer citations in your booklets and also on architecture.com. And so I'm now going to hand over to Lady Susie Sainsbury. The first RIBA Honorary Fellowship this year goes to Professor Peter Carl of London Metropolitan University. Peter Carl is one of the most influential teachers of architecture at work today. He studied architecture at Princeton and taught at the University of Kentucky before moving to Cambridge in 1979, teaching design and the graduate program in the history and philosophy of architecture with Dalibor Vesely, Joseph Rickwert, and Wendy Pullen. There, his work deepened our understanding of cities from their origins to the present day. After 20 years, Peter became director of the PhD program at London Metropolitan University. Peter has always placed architecture in a wider cultural context, Time and again, his thinking, his writing, and his teaching have returned to Le Corbusier. For him, one of the last architects to care about the traditional inheritance of architecture and to rethink it creatively. Um, thank you very much, and I... I that for that glorious description of me, which I feel I'm here under false pretenses insofar as what, what I remember happening is finding myself amongst students and colleagues much more talented and intelligent than me and finding myself being able to say yes at the right moments. <laughs> to the extent that it was more than that, it's perhaps most simply summarized in the, in the title of our PhD course at the CAS, Practical Wisdom. Practical, emphasizing the concrete, 
the material, the architectural over the conceptual, and wisdom in the spectrum between data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. Wisdom harbors the ethical stuff and therefore not only talks about what's good in any sense, but enables one to collaborate or to compromise without losing track of what's most important. Thanks very much. The second new RIBA Honorary Fellow is Marilyn Dyer, Registrar of the AA. Marilyn commenced her employment at the Architectural Association in 1970 as the coordinator for the Centre of Advanced Studies in Environment. Over a period of four decades, she has worked with four different chairmen, Alvin Boyarski, Alan Balfour, Moisen Musto Safavi, and Brett Steele. In that time, she's been responsible for the administration and coordination of the Centre for Advanced Studies in Environment, professional practice, the school's facilities, its graduate and undergraduate schools, admissions and accounts. She's also acted as its assistant registrar, and for the last 14 years as its registrar. The AA is always evolving and is a vastly changed place from the one she joined. None of this would have been possible without her expertise, clear thinking and humour. I would like to thank the Royal Institute of British Architects and Committee for their acknowledgement and award of the Honorary Fellowship. My thanks also to the heads of the AA School, Alvin, Alan, Moisson, Brett, as well as all my friends and colleagues from the admin and academic life of the AA, and of course the students. Through the years, it has always been very interesting, thought-provoking, and never dull. Thank you. <laughs> The next honorary fellowship is going to Kurt Foster, an architectural historian. Kurt is an historian, critic, and writer who has been professor and director of doctoral studies at Yale School of Architecture since 2005, directing advanced students who are investigating subjects in 19th and 20th century art and architecture. Kurt graduated in the history of art and architecture, literature and archaeology at the University of Zurich and taught at Yale, Stanford, Berkeley, Harvard and at MIT. In 1984, he founded and became the first director of the Getty Institution of Research in Los Angeles. He guided the formation of a vast library of archives and publications, texts and documents. Between 2003 and 2005, he was professor of architecture at the Bauhaus University, Weimar. Kurt is director of the 9th International Architecture Exhibition in Venice, the Biennale, whose theme was Metamorphosis. In high school, my worst grade was in English. Therefore, I was sent for remedial training to London. And within a few weeks, uh, when I was 19 years old, um, London managed to crack the shell of my continental post-war upbringing and made me spend the second half of my life in the United States, where I've had the privilege to work with a number of uh, outstanding British architects, artists, writers, and in the various uh, the pursuits of uh, research, uh, particularly at the Getty Research Institute, uh, I had the support of... Uh, Julia Bloomfield for a publication series of Nicholas Holzberg for the creation of one of the major art historical archives and therefore feel enormously rewarded from that initial faux pas uh, that turned a fake aspiration to be a French intellectual into a genuine engagement with the intellectual world thanks to London. And, uh, uh, I know that nobody can earn such an honour, therefore I want to doubly thank you for bestowing it upon me. Thank you. The 
The next honorary fellowship goes to Gerald D. Hines. Gerald D. Hines leads an international real estate company with developments throughout the US and 16 other countries with a fast-growing portfolio in the UK. Many of his buildings were designed by well-known architects. I. M. Pei, Cesar Pelli, Frank Gehry, Robert A. M. Stern, Herzog and de Meuron, and Philip Johnson. In the UK, Heinz owns a mixed-use Brindley Place, Birmingham, and in London owns two phases of the redevelopment of Broadcake West, originally designed by Gensler and SOM. With Network Rail, Heinz is also redeveloping Cannon Street Station. Heinz remains an enthusiast for architecture. This is the one profession, he says, where you can see a physical exemplification of your work. It's a real turn-on. It's wonderful for a developer to work with great architects. I've worked with some of the great ones in the world. And we've had some wonderful experiences on Cannon Street here in London and now in Cherrywood in Dublin. These will be great experiences and I look forward to working with, some, again, many great architects that turn me on and have turned some great projects. Thank you. The next RIBA Honorary Fellow is Neil Hobhouse, critic, collector, and client. Neil is unique in having contributed to the architectural scene as a critic and a historian, as an administrator, as a very independent but also a thoughtful patron, and as a collector. His collection of architectural drawings includes some 3,000 European and American items from the early 16th century to the present day. As a patron, Neil has commissioned a number of buildings in London and on his Somerset estate by the Smithsons. Florian Bagel, Cedric Price, Stephen Taylor, Skeen Catling, and most recently Hugh Strange, whose Architecture Archive won an RIBA National Award in 2014. Neil is an architectural advisor to cultural institutions on building commissions and competitions, most recently the Landmark Trust for the 2013 RIBA Sterling Prize winning Astley Castle, and the Courtauld Institute of Art for a new exhibition space. Thank you. Uh, I think the, the wonderful thing about uh, the Honorary Fellowship Programme is a kind of recognition on the part of the RIBA that ideas can come from outside uh, the profession. Um, and I'm honoured and grateful to be in the company of so many other non-architects here whose work uh, I've admired for many years. Thank you very much. The sixth RIBA Honorary Fellowship goes to the artist Ola Kuramainen from Finland. Ola Kalamainen is an artist who works exclusively with the photographic medium. He was educated at the University of Industrial Design in Helsinki, then relocated to Berlin in the 90s, where he is still based. Inspired by modernists such as Mies and Alto, Kalamainen makes us look again at the way we perceive architecture. Latterly, he's been travelling to study buildings by Frank Gehry, Stephen Hall, and Future Systems. His particular and judgmental eye is often also attracted to those anonymous buildings that make up the majority of our cities. Through his naked exposures and interpretations of the surface of these stru structures, we are confronted with the reality of our everyday life through poetic means and led to question and reconstruct for ourselves our own environment. This evening is about encounters. The past, years I have, the past years have provided me a huge gift. Literally and metaphorically, there has been numerous encounters with architects and artists from the past and from the current times. Their ideas, their works, texts, talks, and words 
have been guiding me and inspiring me in my path up to date and will continue for far future. This honorary fellowship is a milestone. I want to thank the jury, bringing me the surprise of my professional life. This gesture also transferred to trust my own work. I want to also thank my, thank my co-partners, curators, architects, friends, gallerists, who have been working with me, with me for many years. I wish you a great evening. Thank you. The next honorary fellow is publisher and writer Ian Latham. Ian has been at the heart of the British architectural scene for 35 years as a writer and editor. He's publishing editor of Architecture Today, the UK's leading independent architectural publishing house, whose shareholders are architects. He joined Architectural Design as a technical editor, overseeing a series of influential features, before moving to Building Design as deputy editor and features editor in 1983, then conceiving and launching Architecture Today with Mark Swinerton in 1989. Ian runs the specialist architectural book publisher, Right Angle, also initially established with Mark Swinerton, and has edited and designed many significant monographs on Dixon Jones, Field and Clegg Bradley, and Hainigan and Howard, Allies and Morrison, and McCormick, Demson, Pritchard. He was founding trustee of the 9H Gallery, the precursor to the Architecture Foundation. I always intended to practice as an architect. Um, I, I studied at Oxford Polytechnic, and in the, those of any of you that was there in the late, late 70s, early 80s, tutors such as Paul Oliver and Tom Porter showed me, at least, that a written discourse was fundamental to architectural culture. Duly distracted, as you heard, I strayed first to architectural design magazine, then building design, then 25 years ago we set up Architecture Today and I never got to take my part three. Um, finding one of those increasingly rare items, an envelope, I, on the back of it, I did a quick calculation and found that the collective output of the, those three magazines during my involvement, plus the various books, has resulted in the printing of 838 million pages. <laughs> so, as well as the poor readers, I'd like to express my gratitude to the 10,000 trees that have made that possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The next honorary fellow goes to Frosso Cominades of the Bartlett. Frosso has been an essential part of the lifeblood of the Bartlett School of Architecture for over 20 years, running the first year course during that entire period. Every student who has gone through the undergraduate course has felt her enthusiasm and influence. Cerebral, warm-hearted, intelligent, fun, and never afraid to voice her opinion. Frosso is a natural-born academic who, through her efforts in opening the minds of so many young students, and above all, making them hungry to immerse themselves in the subject of architecture, has enriched the profession enormously. She is renowned for the quality of her drawing. Jaws have been known to drop at her sketches, and a generation of architects has emerged from the school reconvinced of the power of architectural drawing. I would like to thank every member of the jury, the RIBA, and the UCL for supporting all the disasters and successes of education. Teaching architecture is keeping one's feet on the ground and one's head amongst the clouds. It is to dream the extraordinary and to build the possible. In a community of students where each of and every member is unique, it is very important to encourage them to be very naughty as well as serious to care for each other, celebrate mistakes, and turn disasters always upside down, and learn to never give up. It's, only the mag it's not only the magic of turning a young person to a gifted and imaginative thinker and designer, but the daily wars between the mundane and the sublime, the disasters and the triumphant, the laughing and the crying that stays with us over the years. I would like to thank all those students colleagues, teachers, mentors, family and friends who over the years have given me the motivation, strength,
to question what is architecture education about. I want to thank them all for their dedication to our common cause of believing that through architectural ideas, one can change the world. But most of all, I would like to thank them for the patience in putting up with me. The next honorary fellowship goes to Vicky Richardson, Director of Architecture, Design and Fashion at the British Council. Vicky, who studied architecture and fine art, took up her post at the British Council in 2010. Her role includes overseeing projects in London and around the world. She's responsible for commissioning the British Pavilion for the Venice Architecture Biennale. Vicky's also a co-director of the London Festival of Architecture and a member of the Lord Mayor's Cultural Strategy Group. She's been a member of various design bureaus, including RIBA Awards. She's a visiting critic at a number of design and architecture schools, and her books include New Vernacular Architecture and In Defense of the Dome. Vicky was deputy editor at the RIBA Journal before becoming editor of Blueprint. In 2014, she was nominated as one of the 20 most influential people in British architecture in Debrett's 500. Thank you very much to Stephen and to Lady Sainsbury. This is um, something that means a lot to me. Um, architects are some of the people I admire most in, in the world, whether that's uh, friends, colleagues, or family. Um, so I'm very, very honored to be part of your institute. Um, when I first heard about this, the person I, I wanted to tell most about it was my tutor from um, PCL long time ago, in the days of polytechnics, a um, very inspiring uh, tutor called Alan Cunningham. And uh, I always kind of felt like I let him down a bit by not becoming an architect. And um, so uh, I, hopefully this makes up for it a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to thank him particularly for being so inspiring all those years ago. Thank you. The next honorary fellow is TV producer Peter Swayze. Peter created and directed the BBC Four series, The Brits Who Built the Modern World. Um, made as a partnership between the RIBA and BBC, the three hour-long films featured exclusive interviews with Richard Rogers, Norman Foster, Nicholas Grimshaw, Terry Farrell, and Michael and Patty Hopkins. Three linked RIBA exhibitions brought record numbers of visitors to 66 Portland Place. <laughs> Peter worked for three years on Channel 4's coverage of the RIB Sterling Prize. His films were played to the live audiences of up to 800 architects and their guests, who watched with rapt attention, which says much about the quality of the filmmaking. Earlier in his TV career, Peter worked on the influential series One Foot in the Past, and one of the first popular TV programs which took architecture seriously. And Peter's unfortunately uh, unwell this evening, so he couldn't be with us, but I accept this on his behalf and I think we should all applaud him. The next award goes to Mark Swenerton, architectural historian and critic. Mark has dual interests as a historian and a critic of architecture. He trained as an architectural historian at the Bartlett under Raina Bannum and succeeded him as a teacher. There, with Adrian Forty, he set up the UK's first master's course in architectural history. In 1989, Mark established an independent architectural publishing house to co-found with Ian Latham the influential monthly review, Architecture Today. In 2000, they also launched Ecotech. In 2005, Mark took up the chair of architecture at Oxford Brookes University. And in 2010, he was appointed the James Sterling Chair of Architecture at the Liverpool School. Mark's publications include Homes Fit for Heroes, Artisans and Architects, The Building of the New Jerusalem. Mark is a fellow of the Royal Historical Society and the RSA. Thank you very much. Uh, I well remember the first occasion that I entered the portals of the RIBA uh, just over 40 years ago when I was studying for my MA and I came to the library here and it was like 
the kid in the candy shop. I couldn't believe it was possible that there was such a single, a single place with such a fabulous collection. And in the decades since then, I've made innumerable uh, visits to the library. And like so many other historians, critics, educators, editors, I've realized that without the collections of the RIBA, without the library, without the drawings collection, without the photographs collection, the culture of architecture would be almost impossible to sustain. Uh, those collections really are the central repositories of knowledge and culture and understanding of architecture. So it is uh, with enormous pleasure that uh, I accept this honorary fellowship of the RIBA, uh, which I think has such a vital role to play in the promotion of architecture. Thank you very much. Our next honorary fellow is structural engineer, Neil Thomas. Neil Thomas set up his firm, Atelier One, in 1989, after working with and being influenced first by Burrow Happold and then by Tony Hunt. Neil's always liked to work on diverse projects, including the stage sets designed by Mark Fisher for Pink Floyd, The Rolling Stones, U2 and Take That, House by artist Rachel Whitfield, and Cloud Gate by Anish Kapoor in Chicago. More conventional architectural projects have included the roof of the Singapore Arts Centre by Michael Wilford, the Cardiff Bay Visitor Centre by Will Alsop, and the Gardens by the Bay by Wilkinson Eyre. The firm continues to conduct research into materials, systems, and construction methods that cut energy consumption and reduce emissions, always seeking the most efficient structural solutions requiring the fewest resources. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, when I was a child, I wanted to be an architect. And I went to university, studied both architecture and engineering, <clears throat> went on to become an engineer. So tonight, for me, for me, this is the most fantastic thing to get. So now I'm an engineer and an architect. <laughs> I'd like to thank the RIBA, Louisa Hutton, Eric Parry, who nominated me, Steve, Lady Sainsbury, thank you. I'd like to thank my partner, Aaron Chadwick, who deserves at least half of this <laughs> for putting up with me. I'd like to thank the office, obviously, because none of this would be, I wouldn't be standing here without. I'd like to thank my wife, Sonia Pabla, who is here tonight. She, while I'm away traveling the world doing all these amazing things, she looks after our family and runs her own architectural practice, which is pretty incredible, actually. But finally, I'd like to dedicate this to Mark Fisher, a man who was, I used to call my friend and a man who showed me that anything is possible. Thank you. Our final honorary fellow, our final honorary fellow, and nobody should pay any attention to this, it's the fact that this is the 13th. Um, our final honorary fellow is academic Dalibor Vaseli. Dalibor Vaseli was born in Prague and studied engineering, architecture, art history, and philosophy in Prague and in Munich. He's taught some of the current leading architects and architectural historians, such as Daniel Liebskind, Moisen Mustafavi, and David Leatherbarrow. He's taught at the University of Essex, at the Architectural Association in London, and since 1978 at the University of Cambridge Department of Architecture where he also started an MPhil program in history and philosophy of architecture with Peter Carl. Dalibor currently teaches architectural history and philosophy at the University of Pennsylvania and is honorary professor, professorial fellow at the Manchester School of Architecture. In 2006, the RIBA honored Dalibor with the Annie Spink Award for Excellence in Architectural Education. Judging by the selection of candidates for the prize, or for the membership, rather, sorry, no prize. <laughs> Fellowship. Uh, prizes are ambiguous, anyway. Um, I'm really very impressed and uh, nicely surprised 
that the selection of people seem to reflect something that is happening in architectural field slowly. And um, this is a kind of new vision of how architecture are really how architecture is really made. The fixed assumption that architecture is reproduced just in pragmatically oriented offices seems to be disappearing in shadow. And it's replaced by something which we still don't have clear picture of, but it's definitely very interesting and provocative. The architecture is made not only in the offices, but there's very often little time to explore, invent, etc. But um, in some of the better schools of architecture, it's interesting that even people like Peter Eisenman claims, you may believe it or not, um, that some of the most interesting recent contribution to architectural innovation comes from better schools. Maybe he's right, maybe not. But also research-oriented design, publicity, and exhibitions, competitions, all that is sort of like a milieu in which gradually something crystallizes and comes eventually, of course, most often to the office when it comes to existence. If this is the tendency for the future, I would like to end up with two words. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Susie, and congratulations to all our new honorary fellows, and we look forward to uh, working with you in years to come.